she starts as a 2x2 and builds up to a powerful stronghold equipped with everything you'll need to thrive in your web comfortably, defend the craziest online raids and survive the most tenacious offlines. Decked out with innovative building tricks and techniques, this base is not your average 2x2. She's got an improved version of h June's Streamer Bunker that allows it to be twice as strong, perfect inner peaks featuring both tight gaps and regular peaks that can be laddered into, slide down roof peaks that allow you to safely loot your body if you die defending your roof, the ideal wet gap shooting floor wrapping around the entire base that's built using a brand new technique allowing for the perfect roof and most importantly even more secrets allowing it to lock down from the inside to help you defend by trapping and separating raiders and deepers. Geared towards a 5 man, the barrack is actually dirt cheap to build and quite expensive to raid. The cheapest path into TC is 27 rockets. If the raiders wanted to full raid you, they would have to spend 67 rockets, but that would still not allow them to take control of the base. With 4 externals intricately weaving into the main build, they would have to spend an extra 16 rockets to gain the building privilege to place their own TC to seal and take over, raising the final cost to 83 rockets. The compound has 4 entrances, making it very difficult for anyone to door camp you. In here you can fit up to 4 large furnaces and oil refineries and have them guarded by as many turrets as you like. There are 2 entrances to the base. The inner peaks wrap around the entire honeycomb 2x2 two two and are guarded by 2 auto turrets. Going up the 2 shoot entrances leads to the main artery of the base. Once you have a turret up here, it will be nearly impossible for raiders to push up. In here you have your critical utilities like drop boxes to be able to quickly depot and a tier 2 barbecue combo for easy access to meds, ammo and food. Going up leads to the shooting floor bedroom, but first let's take a look at the main bedroom and core. In here you can have up to 5 beds and 7 lockers. Most importantly, notice that you can close these 2 double doors behind closed doors from your main response and seal the main hallway, allowing you to safely move up and down your shooting floor. Going down leads to the main loot. Guarded by yet another turret, here you're able to fit up to 4 furnaces, a research table, a repair bench, a barbecue, up to 2 electricity rooms and most importantly 2 shot 7 box loot rooms, allowing you to fit 14 large boxes in only 2 squares, which since the storage update is actually an absurd amount of loot. Going down leads to the bunker. Guarded by the final turret, here you have room for your TC, up to 5 sleeping bags, 11 large boxes, your main workbench, and yet another set of utilities. Going all the way up leads to the shooting floor. Up here you can have up to 5 beds, 4 lockers, and 8 large boxes guarded by yet another turret. Up here you also have another workbench barbecue combo for easy access to meds, ammo, and food. The hallway leads to 2 independent inner peaks. These feature both tight gaps that provide maximum safety while allowing to shoot rockets and HEs, and regular peaks that can be laddered into. Both lead to the full wraparound shooting floor featuring even more tight gaps overlooking the shell, slide down roof peaks that allow you to safely loot your body if you die defending your roof, and brand new white gaps that not only offer tons of angles to defend the compound, but also allow for the perfect roof featuring these amazing OG peaks that used to be a thing years ago. Now here's my favorite part of this base. Let's say you've been caught with your pants down. All doors are open, someone made it into your inner peaks and prevents you from defending. Well, right from your shooting floor response, you can instantly close these double doors behind closed doors to secure the hallway. This then allows you to safely close all inner peaks double doors to the wall. Because the inner peaks are independent, even if one is compromised, you can still use the other one to defend parts of your shell. But that's not all. Now you can also close the two double doors of your chutes to the floor and all four wide gap double doors to the tight gaps of the shell, allowing you to compartmentalize your shooting floor even further and gradually regain control of the base to safely come back for the most dire of situations. As usual, I've built the base on the builder's sanctuary so you guys can tour it yourself and get a feel for it before you commit to a wipe. Simply go in browse and search for the barrack or use the code to load it in. Alright, now let's build this baby. Start by building H June's 2x2 streamer bunker footprint and upgrade everything to stone. Place your TC at first two large boxes. Now I know right now, some of you guys are thinking, whoa, what is he doing? Everyone builds this 2x2 two two bunker with raised foundation. This is stupid, I'm out. Well, let me take you to the land of science for a moment so I can explain. People build raised foundations because once you have the bunker roof built, you can't build your honeycomb. But if you build the honeycomb first, then you can still build the roof. Now, why would you do that? 
Well, let's put both versions to the test, shall we? This, ladies and gentlemen, is why we're going to build this bunker with low foundations. All right, now that we're on the same page, let's go back to the build. So before we build the bunker roof, there are two things we need to do. First, get your bags down, because if you close your bunker and don't have bags inside, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to want to place the first two bags like so. If you barely clip the bag into the door frame, you shouldn't need to pick it up later on when you'll be replacing the double doors with garage doors. Then you're going to place the three remaining bags like so. If you rotate them three times, it will allow you to clip the left side into the wall, which gives you just enough room to place the fifth bag like so without preventing you from building the transversal bunker roof. Second, build the honeycomb on the bunker side like so. Now you can build the bunker roof inside. This is how you close and open the bunker. This bunker is especially strong because it can be closed from the inside and the outside, which almost allows you to use it like a door. Let's furnish the bunker now. In here you have room for a workbench and three small furnaces. Bring a triangle shelf into the main TC compartment like so. This gives you enough room to place two additional large boxes. If you climb above the bunker and build the half wall, you'll be able to perfectly place yet another two large boxes in a small box. I recommend doing this when you're low on food because you'll have to have one kill afterwards. Finally, you can place two large boxes under the bunker roof like so. This is pretty tricky because it requires near pixel perfect placement, but if you stand as far back as possible, it will make it much easier. Congratulations, your starter is now complete. This bunker is very functional and should carry you easily to tier 2. Once you have it, replace your tier 1 in the core. Also now I'm going to upgrade everything to its final state to make the video easier to follow. Upgrade the entire bunker to HQM as soon as you can afford it. Once you have garage door researched, place three in the bunker. If you placed your bags correctly, you should need to pick them up. Now you can build this ceiling, which allows you to place two more large boxes. When you place this second box, make sure you can still close the bunker to avoid bad surprises in the heat of the moment. You can now place a barbecue small box combo here. With the two starter furnaces gone and a garage door in the TC compartment, you now have enough room to fit a research table, two more large boxes and two small boxes. Down here you can fit a repair bench and two small boxes. Why a repair bench? Because it has the perfect height to allow you to comfortably navigate the bunker. Here I'm only holding crouch, and my character is naturally going up and down without me needing to crouch jump. Now that the core is complete, let's build the rest of the base. The jump up to the first floor could remain sheet metal, but if you can afford it, upgrade the first two triangle foundations and walls to HQM. The TC honeycomb can stay sheet metal. You can now use the furnaces that you just picked up for the jump up. Complete the jump up like so. If you can afford it, upgrade these two walls to HQM. The last one can remain sheet metal because it will be the honeycomb for one of the loot rooms. Before you build this floor, honeycomb the bunker.
Now you can build the main loot floor like so. Place three furnaces in the jump up and close everything with five garage doors. Now that you have garage doors down on the loot rooms, you can build the two shot 7 box loot rooms. If you don't know how to build shot 7 box loot room, this is how you do it. Start by placing four boxes in a standard square formation on the floor. Then build your triangle shelf. Place the first box as far as it gets on the triangle's end. This allows you to perfectly place the back box, which is the hardest one. Now, with the help of a twig ceiling, you can easily place the last box. When you close the garage door, if nothing sticks out, you did it right. Congratulations, you now know how to build shot 7 box loot room, the best loot room in the game. To complete the second one, just rotate the wall and repeat the same process. This triangle will be your electricity room. For now, you can just close it off with a twig window frame. This allows you to line up a research table large box combo, a repair bench with two small boxes, a barbecue small box combo, and if you placed everything perfectly, you should be able to also fit a fourth furnace by the jump up. All right, now that the main loot is complete, it's time to get to the main bedroom floor. First, honeycomb the main loot. Close the honeycomb by the jump up. This allows you to build the main bedroom like so and close it with a garage door. Once you have your two first lockers down, in here you can place up to five beds. Start by placing the first bed as close as possible to the locker. It's very important when placing this bed that you have the headboard on the right side. While putting this build together, I discovered that beds actually have a weird hitbox, and if you place them this way, it allows you to clip them into one another, which gives you just enough room to place the last two beds like so, allowing you to fit five beds in only two square space. Now we're going to use this triple locker technique that I discovered while watching Diddling. Build your twig window frame first. Place the three lockers as close to the window frame as you can. If you've placed everything correctly, you should be able to reach the code locks on the lockers. Once you've tested and confirmed that you can reach the code locks, upgrade the window frame and cover with a horizontal metal embrasure. Let's finish the rest of the bedroom floor now. First, build the shoot entrances like so. Line up the last bar of the ladder with the ceiling to place it perfectly. Up top, surround the entire floor with walls. Build your jump up in front of the bedroom door. Then the dropbox loot room. And fill in the rest with double door frames.
Upgrade everything to sheet metal except for the shoot double door frames. Place double doors opening outwards in the stone frames and garage doors in the metal ones. Place your four draw boxes and cover them with a window frame. You can have two more lockers in these two spots and a tier 2 RQ small box combo in the hallway. The floor above will be your shooting floor bedroom, but there's no need to build it just yet because we need to get the inner peaks up first. And to do that, we need to build our inner peaks external TCs. Of the sides of the honeycomb 2x2 that don't have the shoot entrances, build 7 squares, then a triangle. Remove the 7 squares, then build all the way back using triangles. Upgrade the 5 triangles closest to the base and demolish the rest. Off the middle triangle, build 6 squares, then 2 triangles. Build the TC compartment like this. Remember, the wall facing towards the base needs to be made of 2 half walls to make Mini Satori's disconnectable TC design function. Demolish the first 4 squares off the TC compartment and upgrade the last 2 squares. On this square, build your compound a lot like so. Single doors funnel traffic in and out of the compound, making it easier to defend. Double door frames can be subsided and give you more cover to defend the outside of the compound when open. This provides enough stability to build the four ceiling frame links. Now, if you get raided and lose your main TC, you can simply disconnect your external with a twig roof like so. Thanks to Mini Satori, the Rust community won't have to break an external TC ever again. Reproduce the same on the other side of the base. Now you can build a shell. In front of each shoot entrance, build a square with a triangle on each side. Then, of the external TC arms, build a triangle, square triangle on each side. Upgrade the triangles and demolish the squares. Build a double door frame on each end and surround the rest with three levels of walls.
top you can now build your inner peaks like this. Down in the shell, building three levels of double door frames in these four spots serves multiple purposes. It allows you to section the shell to make it more defendable, prevents raiders from laddering up and teammates from falling through. Chain link fences are perfect here because it will prevent raiders from easily boosting over the doors while still allowing you to shoot through. Up top you can now build your shooting floor bedroom like so. Now you can finish your inner peaks like so. Placing the double doors facing inwards makes them poke through the wall when open, allowing you to close them from the inside. You can cover the windows with vertical metal embrasures for now, but eventually we'll have strengthened glass windows here. Reproduce the same on the opposite side of the base. Now if you need to, you can close all four doors of your inner peaks from the safety of your shooting floor bedroom. You can also close the shoot double doors through the inner peaks gaps as well. Now we're going to build a roof access and roof peaks, but to do that first we need to build the shaler locks for stability purposes.
now it's time to build these amazing new white gaps. Off the shell squares, build 15 squares out, followed by a triangle. Demolish the squares and build back all the way using triangles. Upgrade the last triangle and demolish everything else. Build 6 squares and then 2 triangles. Build the same TC compartments as before. Remember the wall facing the base is made of two half walls for stability purposes. Demolish the first four squares of the TC compartment and upgrade the last two ones. Build the same compound airlocks as before and complete the disconnectable TC links. Right now you might be wondering, man, 15 squares, is it worth it? Well you tell me, this is a regular white gap, and this is my new white gap for comparison. As you can see, the regular white gap is not safe from top-down aggression, but this one is. Also, because the roofs sit directly on the white gap supports, it fixes all stability issues. And to top it all, it even allows to bring back these amazing OG top peaks that used to be a thing years ago. Also, just as a side note, on high pop servers, real estate is rarely free, so you might not always be able to build 15 squares out, but that's not a problem. You can break down the whole process in multiple steps and achieve the same result. You can do 7, 8, 3 times 5, 5 times 3, it's all the same. Alright, now that we're on the same page, let's go back to the build. On the first square off the base, build 4 triangles on each side. Upgrade the ones facing outwards and demolish the ones facing towards the base. Reproduce the same on the opposite side of the base. Now that you have your white gap footprint down, it's time to close the compound, which costs 16 walls and 4 metal barricades. Now it's time to get the white gaps up. Build 3 levels of double door frames on the white gap foundations and keep the top middle one twig. Now you can finish your white gap like so. If you have enough stability, demolish the twig frame. If not, upgrade it to sheet metal because the smaller hitbox gives you more visibility.
or produce the same for the other white gap. Now you can complete your roof up top like so. Attaching the middle roof to the core prevents it from connecting with the rest, which results in these amazing top peaks. Your base roof and compound are now fully defendable without having any turrets yet, so the next step consists in wiring a ton of them. On each end of the honeycomb 2x2, build as many levels of double door frames as you can. The higher you go, the more power your windmills will generate. Down in main loot, you can now demolish the twig window frame. In this triangle, you can fit a large battery, a root combiner, a switch, ideally a smart switch if you have it researched, and up to 8 electrical branches. The windmills go into the root combiner, which goes into the battery, which goes into the switch, which goes into the first electrical branch. You're then going to go power out, power in every time, and branch 10 power out for the turrets. This is where I'd recommend placing them. You want one in the bunker to help defend against brute force raids, one on the floor above to defend your main loot, one in the main artery of the base to defend the main bedroom shoots and shooting floor jump up, one on the shooting floor to defend your top respawns, two in the inner peaks, these are probably the most important ones, and two defending the roof entrances. Once you have everything wired and power is still going up, you can build the window frame again, upgrade it to stone, and cover it with a reinforced glass window. Now in this example I'm only setting up 8 turrets, but of course you're welcome to add more in your compound and on your roof if you want to. If you plan to do so though, when you build your main loot floor, you're going to want to keep that second triangle open for a second battery, because a large battery can only power up to 9 turrets. Your base is now pretty much complete, but there's always more to do. Your roof, for example, is the perfect place for a heli garage and some drone shops. Upgrading the vending machine's triangles to sheet metal can be worth it if you have a lot of loot in there for the whole server to see. In the compound you can fit many large furnaces and oil refineries. If you have large furnace researched but don't have a compound yet, building a large furnace base of one of the externals can save you a lot of unnecessary wood farming.
once you have your tier 3, you replace the tier 2 in your core. If you placed everything perfectly earlier on, you shouldn't need to pick anything up. Once you can afford it, upgrade the part of your shell that's in front of the shoot entrances to sheet metal to force raiders to face the turrets. Upgrade these triangle foundations to sheet metal as well to make it harder for offliners to soft side into your peaks. If you need more loot room, you can fit a ton of boxes in the shell. If you have a lot of loot in here, you should probably section the shell even further. This will also give more stability to your inner peaks, preventing them to collapse if the raiders deal too much damage to the shell. Flank bases are essential to successfully defending a raid, so if you wanted to attach one to an external, this is how I'd recommend doing it. Cars have been buffed yet again, so if you wanted to attach a car garage to an external, remember to build at least a 2x3 to fit a car lift. You could build a horse base, a farm base, imagination is the limit really. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope this was helpful. If you learned anything today, I'd really appreciate if you leave a like to help me grow. Take it easy guys, and I hope to see you in the next one.